In this series of videos, we're going to take a look at the various features built into a Synology router. So we're going to start this episode by walking you through the process of performing an initial setup. Out of the box, our Synology router consists of the router, a quick install guide, a power supply, and a network cable. While not all models of Synology router will have directional aerials, if your router does, the first thing you need to do is position them so that they are pointing up. If we take a look at the ports on our router, we first have a power port, then a recessed reset switch, an on off button, a four port network hub, the port to connect the router to the internet, a single USB 3 port, a switch to enable or disable Wi-Fi, a button for Wi-Fi protected setup to make the process of connecting devices to your wireless network easier. Then finally on the front of the unit, you should find a series of indicator lights to help you determine the state of your wireless router. Let's plug our wireless router into an internet connection and connect the power adapter. We can now switch on our router, but we will have to wait until it's fully booted. How long it takes to boot will depend on the model of router you are using. However, on most models of Synology router, when the status light starts to blink green, this is the indicator that the router is ready to be set up. While you can use your smartphone or tablet to set up your new router, we feel it's easier to use a computer. First, you need to connect your computer to the default wireless network your new router has created. We will know which wireless network to connect to, because it will be the one starting with Synology underscore and part of the router's MAC address. When you try to connect to your router's wireless network, you will be prompted for a password. The default password is Synology. As we have not yet configured our router to allow it to connect to the internet, we now need to load something called Synology Router Manager. To do this, if we open a web browser, and in the address bar, type 192.168.1.1. When we press enter, we are presented with the setup screen for our router. Let's select start. First, we need to create an administrator's account for our router. However, as you cannot use the word admin or administrator, you will need to create a username that is easy to identify as the administrator's account. We now need to create a password for our administrator's account. To keep our router safe, it is recommended that we create a password that is between 10 and 14 characters in length. We should also ensure that our password uses upper and lowercase letters, at least one number, and one non-letter character. The password strength indicator will help to give you an idea as to how strong your password is. We now need to confirm that we have read and accepted Synology's end user license agreement. After selecting next, we will need to create a wireless network as the default wireless network we are currently using will be deleted when we finish setting up our router. In the SSID field, you need to enter the name you would like to use with your wireless network. As this name will be how you find and connect to your wireless network, it is a good idea to use a name that is easy to identify. Next, we need to set a wireless password. Once again, we have a password strength indicator to help us choose a strong Wi-Fi password. As different countries have their own rules with regards to wireless signals, you will need to set the location where your wireless router will be situated. 
Let's select Next. We now need to choose how our router will operate. This can be either as a wireless router or as a wireless access point. A wireless router will create a network to manage all data traffic that passes through it, while a wireless access point is used to either extend an existing wireless network or provide a wired network with wireless connectivity. As we want our router to create its own network, we're going to choose Wireless Router. If enabled, external access to SRM will allow your router to be remotely accessible via the internet. However, it's considered best practice not to enable this option. We're now ready to set up our internet connection. Within internet connection, we have four options. However, the method that we use will be dependent on our internet service provider. Before you start setting up your router, it is a good idea to check with your internet service provider as to which connection method you should be using. Also make sure that you have the relevant information needed to connect your router to the internet. For this example, we will be using Auto IP. After selecting Apply, our router will attempt to set itself up. However, as the process will change the name of the wireless access point we are connected to, we will be prompted to reconnect to our new wireless access point. After connecting our computer to our new wireless access point, we can try and log into Synology Router Manager. In theory, we should be able to use the address find.synology.com to find the router on our network. However, if this does not work, if you enter the default IP address for your router, you will be taken to the login screen for Synology Router Manager. After entering the administrator's credentials that we created for our router, we are first congratulated on the setup of our router and asked if we wish to start managing or adding Wi-Fi points to our network. As we currently do not have any additional Wi-Fi points to extend the range of our wireless network, we're going to select Start Managing now. Once again, we are prompted to sign into our new router using our administrator's credentials. We're now presented with a Welcome to Synology Router Manager window, which provides information about the additional services and features we can install on our router. After clicking OK, we are asked if we would like to use Google Analytics to measure page views and browsing behavior. For this option, we decided to select No Thanks. Finally, we're asked if we would like to register to a Synology account and modify the update settings to our router. Let's check what update settings our router is currently using. The default option is to check for and display any new versions of SRM, including new features, enhancements, important updates, and security fixes. While we could change these settings, for now let's leave these settings on their defaults. As you can see, our router has checked for updates and next to status informs us that an update is available. However, as we have not yet tested that our router is connected to the internet, let's not update our router just yet. As our router will notify us as to when it has any updates by placing a red dot in the corner of the control panel and the system icon, in the Keep Your Synology Router Updated window, we're going to tick Don't Show This Again. Let's open another browsing tab and test that we can connect to the internet. With confirmation that our computer is able to connect to the internet, if we return to Synology Router Manager, we can now update our router. From the desktop of Synology Router Manager, if we select Control Panel, and then from the sidebar choose System. Our router will automatically check for updates and display it next to status. We now need to download the update to our router. Depending on when your router was last updated, you might find that you have to update your router multiple times in order to have it running on the latest version of SRM. When we select Update Now, our router will start the update process. However, you will find that Synology routers will take a long time to complete a single update. So while your router is being updated, 
you need to make sure that you do not accidentally switch it off or remove it from its power source. When our router restarts, we're once again presented with the login screen to Synology Router Manager. We have now completed a basic setup of our router, its wireless network, and have tested that we can connect to the internet. So in the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at how you can create up to five separate wireless networks to improve security and network performance.